Dan Priestley, the head of the Tesla Semi program, recently just provided an update on the state of the project at the ACT Expo. For whatever reason, Tesla doesn't want to give these updates on their own social media channels or YouTube channel. I don't know why, because it's usually kind of interesting and exciting. But for whatever reason, they decided this is an ACT exclusive, and I wanted to highlight some of the more interesting updates Dan provided in his presentation, mostly about the Mega Charger network. So far, there's only really been about two. There's like one small one at the Giga Nevada facility where the semi trucks are made. And there's one at the Frito-Lay Modesto facility where a lot of Tesla semis are already in use. But at this event, he detailed that they've already broke ground on dozens more locations and they expect to have 46 to be online by early 2027. And they kind of showcased a map showing a rough ballpark idea of where all of these megawatt charging systems will take place. And these are just 46 locations, mind you, not 46 stalls. I believe he said later in the event that combining all of the stalls at these different locations, there's going to be like 300 different actual mega charger stalls that can be simultaneously charging Tesla semis. And I believe when he says open to the public, he means that other all electric semi trucks out there that use the megawatt charging system connector or MCS, all of these charging stations are going to be available to not just Teslas. So it can charge non-Tesla semi trucks out there, which is really exciting to think about. Just like all electric semi trucks popping up all across the country and each one of them not burning any fuel and being able to charge it over one megawatt charging speed. He said the affordability of the electricity is key to making this adaptable and appealing to fleet buyers out there. And in order to hit that low price point, they've actually designed the V4 supercharger cabinet to be capable of working with megawatt charging systems like what the Tesla Semi uses, but it's those same V4 cabinets that are going to be put in for charging consumer vehicles like the Cybertruck and even Tesla Model Ys and Model 3s. You know, obviously they're not going to pull as much power, but by sharing as many components and parts as possible with the consumer grade charging systems, that gives them a lot of manufacturing leverage and supply chain negotiation capability that they wouldn't otherwise have. So I was not actually too surprised to see that there's a lot of megawatt charging systems they plan on installing between California and Texas. Obviously, they've got Giga Texas there, so there's a, probably a huge need for charging Tesla semis because Dan Priestley reaffirmed that they plan on using a lot of Tesla semis for their own logistics, for moving around parts, batteries, and of course, cars. And naturally, they wanted to include a megawatt charging network that can make sure all Tesla semis coming out of Giga Nevada can drive all the way to Texas. But what's interesting is they appear to have put a couple of chargers out in Georgia and even a couple in Illinois. I don't know if Tesla has some immediate plans out there. I'm guessing maybe it's from negotiating with some of their biggest fleet customers like PepsiCo, likely has some distribution centers out in Georgia and Illinois. So they probably want to start expanding Tesla semi coverage to those regions as well. But it also got me thinking that maybe Tesla is eyeing different locations for Giga factories. Obviously, Giga Mexico didn't end up happening for all kinds of tariff related reasons. But if Tesla wants to continue to grow vehicle production and deliveries in the future, Georgia might actually be a decent spot for their next Gigafactory location. You know, Rivian already received a huge Department of Energy loan to build out their factories in Georgia. Other EV manufacturers are also allegedly looking at expanding in Georgia. Apparently, it's a very manufacturing-friendly state in regards to rules and taxes and regulations and that kind of thing. So it gets me excited to see, like, dozens of these megachargers going in. And, of course, he provided an update on the Tesla Semi itself, saying, they're switching to a different battery cell technology for the version of the Tesla Semi that's going into volume production. The facility in Giga Nevada apparently is going to be rated for 50,000 units a year, which is just crazy to think about. Every time I go to work, I see two to three different Tesla Semis on the road, but that's just in their pilot production. But Dan is saying what's going to help with the profitability and scaling of the Tesla Semi is this new cell they're switching to, which is over 7% more efficient, which means it's a smaller overall battery pack with the same range as what they're using in the pilot program. But he didn't talk about 4680s. He made no mention of them switching to the 4680s, even though I know that's been the plan for a while. Back when they talked about expanding Giga Nevada, they said they were going to have a designated 4680 battery line there that would be used for the Tesla Semi. So it's possible that this next generation Semi that apparently has windows that roll down now, so that's helpful for Semi truck drivers that need to punch in a code at 
at a gate or something. He talked about efficiency improvements with the rear view mirrors, apparently. Those have been improved to be more aerodynamic and still provide great visibility. I still think there would probably be a huge benefit if they could just drop the mirrors entirely, just move to cameras, because there's already like 10 cameras on the Tesla Semi as is. But because he didn't use the term 4680 at the event, it makes me wonder if they're just switching to a more energy-dense 2170 cell that Panasonic is making. He did clarify that the cells are made in the United States, so this is not an imported cell, but I do wonder if they are still using just a newer generation 2170 cell because they're already cranking out a ton of those at the Panasonic facility. But apparently the plan is still 500 miles of range, but of course using a smaller battery pack means higher payload capacity, which is great for the customer. But they also plan on offering a standard range version of the Tesla Semi with a 300 mile range that I'm sure will be a bit cheaper, probably a bit more energy efficient. And depending on the routes that the Semi is running, that might be the perfect amount of range for a lot of customers. It just depends. Another detail that we didn't hear much about from Dan Priestley's presentation is on autonomy. And that's partly because I think full self-driving doesn't scale to other vehicle platforms as easily as many people think. You know, like Chris from Dirty Tesla, he reviews full self-driving very diligently and he made it very clear that the Cybertruck is noticeably worse with full self-driving than his Hardware 4 Model Y and even the Hardware 4 Model 3 that he test drove. And I think there's a very real chance that Tesla can't just immediately transfer full self-driving onto the Tesla Semi and have it perform as reliably. Even though that was some of the original promises from the initial Tesla Semi unveil, they were like, oh, this is going to be so cost-effective because we can just put FSD on the Semi truck and have convoy mode. And then the Tesla Semis will be driving themselves around with no one in the driver's seat. But there's so many different kinds of driving you have to do with a big Semi truck. You have to turn differently. You have to park differently. You definitely have really complicated situations where you have to back into different distribution centers for the truck to be unloaded and everything. So because of that, I think in the short term, the Tesla Semi is just going to be manually driven. I just wish they could give it at least basic autopilot. Just highway assist could go a long way because I have to interact with semi trucks all the time whenever I'm driving to work. And, you know, I drive like 30,000 miles a year. So this happens a lot, but I always see semi trucks that, you know, because they're so wide or maybe because the truck driver's focused on other things, they tend to drift into my lane or they drift off the road a little bit. And I keep thinking, you know, we don't even need enhanced autopilot. We don't need this thing to be changing lanes automatically, or we don't need the semi to be using summit or anything, but just having a way for the cameras to keep the semi truck perfectly centered on the lane. I feel like that could go a long way for a lot of these semi truck drivers. And it's a real problem because we have a trucking shortage right now. We are very dependent on semi trucks for all of our logistics and supply chains in the States, but not enough people of course want to become semi truck drivers. And I think making semis easier to drive in and more comfortable to learn and not having to take as long to train, I think could really incentivize more people to become semi truck drivers. Honestly, this whole YouTube thing doesn't work out. I actually kind of like the idea of being a Tesla semi truck driver. Could be a lot of fun and I hope they give you all kinds of charging stats inside the screen, especially when you're plugged into one of these megawatt charging systems. It's just nutty to me that it could pull that much power and basically recharge as fast as our Model 3s and Model Ys do, but with a ginormous, you know, like 850 kilowatt hour battery. It's pretty nutty. What do you guys think of the Tesla Semi? I personally think it's actually one of the most exciting products they're working on right now, but that's probably because, you know, I tend to think that robo taxis are a little too much of a pipe dream and may not scale as easily as Tesla thinks. But I do think having all electric class eight semi trucks is key to the transition to electric vehicles. Dan Priestley's doing a fantastic job. I think he should be CEO if we're being honest. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.